Hey guys, welcome back to 1776 or Bust. So today is the video that's going to be talking about the Steyr C982. As many of you know, I took it to the range, shot really nicely, had a couple of problems. One of the problems that I found was actually the trigger uh, safety was not functioning the way it should. I mean, obviously your trigger safety should not stick in the back position. Um, thus, it would be eliminating the whole point of having a trigger safety. So as a result, I did contact Steyr. I spoke to a couple of gentlemen over there. Uh, they were pretty helpful. Um, you know, I don't know if the results were exactly what I was expecting. Uh, usually when you call a place and you say, hey, listen, I got some issues with my handgun, right away they would talk about possibly just sending it back. Um, I think it was because I am a little familiar with the operational side of Sire handguns, being such a fan of them, uh, and knowing how to take them down completely, that uh, they gave me some tips to look for, or at least to self-diagnose, and then if I couldn't diagnose it myself, then sending it back to them, which wasn't a bad idea. Obviously, it's always going to be based upon your level of, uh, I guess, um, practice or experience when dealing with your handgun. I was always I would always recommend at least learning something about the internals of your handguns, just so that if something does go wrong, you might be able to fix it without ever sending it back. So what did I find on this gun in particular? So as many of you know, and I'll put out the trigger control unit here, uh, on the video that I made, what was happening was when the, the trigger safety was being pulled back, uh, one of the things I noticed was that this top portion was actually getting stuck in the rear position. So it wasn't releasing. You'd actually have to tap the bottom of the safety for it to release. That's a little bit of a problem issue because let's say you, whatever reason you're shooting at the top portion of that trigger, it's going to lock back in place thus eliminating a safety that you may or may not be you know aware of so what i wound up doing and uh, i don't know if it's going to focus in here too well but let me see if i can do this on my other camera but if you notice let me see if i can flip it around one of the things i had brought up that we got to make sure it focuses was that this area right here let me do it this way duh so this area right there. You see where that little drop down is? That's the back of the trigger safety. So you can see. Now, what I noticed was right at the bottom portion, you can see where that's actually moving back and forth. But the bottom portion of that trigger actually had a little bit of a plastic burr in there. So what I wound up doing was I actually took my Dremel out and I started carefully Dremeling it away. Now, you can see that the trigger safety is moving freely now. It is not locking back in place. So that actually actually is what the problem was. There was a piece of plastic that was extending upward so that when you push that trigger safety back, it would actually catch it in place. When you touch the bottom, it would kind of lift that trigger safety up just a slight bit amount, which would then release it. So that's what I found was the problem. So I wound up actually just taking that Dremel and really slowly and carefully cutting away at some of that material. Um, again, I did it really small portions of it at a time just to make sure I wasn't going to do anything uh, stupid or overly do it, uh, which was what I was concerned about. Again, I wouldn't recommend this necessarily unless you feel really confident with your own handgun, especially with the Steyr, but it is a fairly straightforward process. It does not take a lot to remove this piece out of your lower. Um, you just really have to like learn how to do it, and then when you do, you can really examine the entire internals of the handgun thanks to that supposed modular uh, trigger control unit, which we know is not. But I uh, just want to share that information with you, uh, that it was not a major concern. Even though it seemed to start off that way, it wound up being something very small, very easily fixed, and now the gun is running smoothly. So I'm going to put this back together, and then I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. All right, guys, about. so we're here back at the table. I just took about maybe like 35, 40 seconds to put it all back together. And uh, it's a super easy teardown. It's not anything complicated, but again, do it at your own risk. So let's take a look. Gun is clear, by the way. So let's look at that trigger safety now and see if it's been fixed. So then there you are again. I'm pushing right at the top portion where the trigger safety meets the top of the trigger. And again, it's not locking in place. It doesn't seem to want to stay there. There's a slight grinding still right about there, but I don't think that's anything major. Uh, I think over time, maybe it'll come, you know, uh, it'll wear itself down a little bit, but uh, it is nothing I'm worried about now because as long as that spring is doing what it needs to do and throwing that back up, it's even better. Uh, so you can see here down at the actual portion of the trigger safety where your pad should be for your finger, um, it is absolutely responsive 100 percent, no issues whatsoever again triggers very easy to manipulate no issues whatsoever so there you go so that seems to be what the big problem was a tiny piece of plastic that wasn't necessarily removed when the gun was being produced um 
I mean, do I feel comfortable with the gun? Yeah, I do at this point. Uh, you know, I'll take it out for some more uh, testing purposes or just kind of just shooting purposes, to be honest with you. But I think more importantly, just to know that now the trigger safety is working the way it should. I think that's a good thing. I'm a little disappointed that it made it out of the factory without anybody noticing that. So if you've had this problem, I would suggest taking out the trigger control group. Again, there's plenty of videos out there. I would check out TN Steyer. He's got a great video on that, and so do some other people out there. But I would definitely take a look to see how you can do it. It's very, very simple. It is not complicated at all. I'd say on a scale of 1 to 10, it's really about a 1 to do it. And uh, if you're having that same trouble with the trigger safety, I'd say take a look. See if that little burr is there, and if it is, file it out or dremel it out or sand it out or whatever you want to do. But that's what I did, and now it's working fine. So uh, leave those comments down below, guys. I appreciate you watching, and uh, we'll see you soon. Have a great night. Stay safe, and as always, freedom is never free.